I am Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most... Oh, nope. Fuck, I fucked it up. Nope. nope. Hold up. Hold up. Take two. Ah. <laughs> That's better. Um, I'm not going to try it again, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in for another episode of TSLP. If you are new to the show... Uh, what Mally mentioned earlier, or well, tried to mention, is uh, we Attempted. like to take uh, movies that uh, end on a sour note, and we try to bring a sweet side to it. So uh, this week, we are taking a look at 2017's Alien Covenant. Uh, <sighs> man. Mally, f- fair warning, uh, going to be up front. This is the episode I've taken the most notes on. Uh, oh, fucking course you have. For a show, because... I've got a lot to say about this pile of garbage. Um, but yeah, do you want to tell us what your first time seeing this movie was? Did you see this one in theaters? Oh, I saw it in theaters. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was... This movie's so fucking bad, dude. It's, it's, so, it's depressingly bad. I think like, even if this movie like, ended on a good note, it would still be depressing. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm a Prometheus defender. Same. I will fucking defend that movie all day. But and I I can't with this one. Yeah, I have it's, no... There's no, like... Nothing. Michael Fassbender's good in it, I guess. Meh. Um, it's, it's... It was so disappointing, dude. It yeah. spits in the face of every Alien movie to come before it. Much yeah. like Alien Resurrection did. It's insulting as a prometheus and an alien fan this movie is like <sighs> we'll get into it but uh so you saw this in theaters uh your initial reaction pretty much the same as it is now yeah i was like well yeah. that was fucking disappointing yeah uh i'm i didn't see this one in theaters uh i got a a, a copy of it uh around the time it was released digitally uh, and i was super stoked got home off work got home put it on and Found myself halfway through it being like, this is good, right? Right? This is, I was just like Stockholm Syndrome with this movie. Like, no, it's it's good. And then when it was over, I was like, oh, that was a pile of garbage. Um, a du- so bad. A dumpster fire of a plot. I mean, just... <sighs> I've got like maybe one or two good things to say about it. But there, it's few and far between with this I'm movie. Like, and dude, like such a waste of this cast too. Yeah, and... Such a waste Fast of the bend- potential. Dude, Billy Crudup, like, I love that man. And I was just talking to a buddy of mine about how good Billy Crudup is. Yeah. In, like, fucking everything. Yeah. He's horrible in this fucking movie. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, you mentioned Michael Fassbender. I don't even think he really gives that great a performance in this one. Not like he did in Prometheus. I don't think he cared that much. No. I think like, he saw this the movie scenes, for what it was. The only scenes I can defend that are like, okay, that was actually interesting. The opening scene... Yeah. I do like the opening yeah, scene. Yeah, the opening scene's pretty good. I do love me some Guy Pierce. It's like a good short film, that opening scene. Um, I almost had a mental slip and said Guy Fieri. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> this movie, but without Guy... Imagine that opening sequence, but instead of Guy Pierce, it's Guy Fieri. Serve me some tea, David. Bring me to Flavortown. Dude, amazing. <laughs> um, And then the scenes between Walter and David. One scene between Walter and David. That flute scene is fucking horrendous. It's a little uh, rough. It, the Ozymandia scene is one of the few good scenes in this movie, but yeah, um, that scene fucks. Yeah, that yeah it does. Let's let's get into the backstory of the movie. So as we mentioned, the year is 2017, uh, directed by Ridley Scott, uh, starring Michael Fassbender, Catherine Watterson, Billy Crudup, Danny McBride. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Damien Bichir, Carmen Jogo, sure. Amy Siemets, Jesse Smollett, James Franco. And Guy Pierce, uh, <laughs> James Franco is in this movie. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, budget of ninety-seven million dollars. Uh, managed to gross two hundred and forty-one million wide. Currently sits at a sixty-six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like too that's high. Too high. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I got so much to say about this movie. Do you want to? Talk about the trailer first before we get into the movie itself. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. 
You've all sacrificed so much to be here and be a part of this thing we're doing. This crew is made up of couples. It's the first ever large-scale colonization mission. And everyone back on Earth is really grateful for your hard work and your courage. We're making history here. This is wheat. What are the odds of finding human vegetation this far from Earth? Who planted it? You hear that? What? Nothing. No birds. No animals. Nothing. What happened here? Okay, the trailer for this movie is infinitely better than the fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> you don't Although need to see the movie. <laughs> it spoils a lot. Yeah. I mean, like the whole time I was watching this movie like with um the dude and the girl that yeah, everyone in this movie like is it's a it's a bunch of couples. Yeah, I I got a real problem with that. Um I don't I it doesn't like it's just like I don't see how that's Im- Important. Like, I understand why they're doing it. They're like, oh, because they're all colonists, blah, 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 blah. You can't have any fucking single colonists. That, like, yeah. damn. But anyway, and it's just, it's just used for cheap fucking emotional moments. Although I will say that little moment that Danny McBride has towards the end when he finds out his wife's dead. Fucking Danny McBride is so fucking rad. He's the it, old, uh, he is the good part of this movie. And keeping it very, like, uh, low-key in his performance, too. Like, he's not he doing really his usual is. thing. It was impressive, honestly. I thought he was gonna be like the comedic relief, the you know thought he was like thought he was gonna be comedic relief, get killed off immediately. I but know. no, I, know. He, I think like, he even said he was surprised by that. Weight. Yeah, he said he was even surprised by that. Um, yeah, I think this is a beautiful trailer. Uh, I think it's very like rhythmic, but it's ultimately kind of misleading. Like uh, you feel Absolutely. like it's gonna be xenomorph alien infested throughout the entire thing, and we barely get any xenomorph action in this movie. Um, yeah, we get the fucking what neomorph, protomorph, whatever the yeah. fuck they're calling them now. I remember being the fucking s- albino, yeah. fucking alien with a fucking asshole for a mouth. I remember being so pumped for this movie too, man. By the trailer, I was like, "Oh, Ridley Scott's back. He's he's merging the best of both worlds." Oh, it should be mentioned. I'm going to be eating this entire episode because <laughs> fuck this movie. Um. <laughs> It's marriaging both worlds of Prometheus and Alien, what I love about both movies, but I ended up getting the worst of both of those. He married... The fucking worst. He married the, the, the terrible parts of the movie. <sighs> okay. Is there anything else we want to get out of the way before we get into this movie? Because it's going to be a long one. That cookie was so much better than this movie. <laughs> um, I gotta say, I like Ridley Scott. Like... But what's hap- what is happening to him? I keep saying I like Ridley Scott. I'm really starting to doubt that I actually do. Because I can't tell you the last time I liked... like Prometheus, yes. Yeah. Like, let's look at his track record for movies yeah. in the past few years. Like, 
Oh, in the past few years, it's not been good, other than Prometheus. Like what, like, what are his good movies? Exactly. It's I, You know, I'm going to pull up his IMDb right now, but it's not... It hasn't oh, been good. Don't even worry about it. I got it right here. Oh, okay. Here. <laughs> so, we got this piece of shit. Mm-hmm. The counselor was a piece of shit. Counselor was fucking horrible. Um, uh, what was that? Exodus? Was that what it was oh, called? Oh, Gods and Kings? Yeah, that was... I didn't even see it, but it looked terrible. Oh, fucking horrible yeah um prometheus you know i'll defend that yeah that was a robin up. hood robin hood sucked didn't see it didn't care for body of lies didn't see it i do fucking love american gangster i've heard good things about american gangster but i haven't seen it i fucking love it mm-hmm. um kingdom of heaven uh, apparently the director's cut's fucking amazing but we're i haven't going, seen that we're going backwards right oh yeah okay uh matchstick men black hawk down Black Hawk Down's fucking dope. Both solid. Yeah. Hannibal, eh. Uh, uh, Hannibal's fine. Gladiator is fucking, fucking incredible. Dope. Fucking dope. Um, and then we're back into like G.I. Jane territory. Yeah. Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise. Yeah. And then we're getting, you know, we're getting back into the deepness with Blade Runner, the original Alien. I'd blah, say blah, he's blah, almost blah. half and half with what's good and what's not. Um, yeah. But I, what between him and like other like infamous directors like James Cameron, I think they're both losing their mind because James Cameron's so far up his own ass with Avatar, and now Ridley Scott is saying he wants to do like four more Alien movies. Like I don't, I don't know, man. I think they're that's just getting, too many. Yeah, and now James Cameron's returning to do another Terminator movie, which I don't know, man. Like I think you're. <sighs> I feel like they're both trying to wrangle back their original franchises because they're out of ideas. Like ne- that Neil Blomkamp uh uh alien movie was, you know, being hyped up and looked it sounded awesome from the premise and really Scott just came out of left field and be like, "Nope, I'm uh, that's been canceled because we're doing some more alien movies that I want to do." And then like we had like what, three or four Terminator movies before James Cameron was like, "You know what? Let me take this shit back." And it's just like, dude, just let it go. Like, it's, I don't know. And then just just the, uh, like, Ridley Scott having that incident about the whitewashing in that Exodus movie. And then James Cameron with his dumb as fuck Wonder Woman comments that he put out last year. It's just like, dude, oh, Jesus. you guys are just getting just old and just, like, go out with dignity. Make make some, you know, films that are, like, personable. And not just try to be like, it's all, it's a franchise, baby. Let's just go full steam ahead. I don't know, man. I feel like all the old directors are just going insane with their properties. But yeah, like we mentioned, like I like this opening scene a lot. Um, <coughs> but on this rewatch, you know, everyone talked about oh, this movie Fassbender's performance. I feel like it's wearing thin. Um, this David performance, just because I've already seen him in Prometheus, and the problem with this character is he can't really do too much new. I mean, he does a lot of new stuff in this movie, but it's ultimately terrible. Well, and they try to play him off like... Or, like... They try to build it up like he's not up to some shady shit. Yeah. We all saw Prometheus. Yeah. The dude cannot be trusted. Um... I hate the problem in that movie is that, I mean the, the the benefit of that movie though is that he's he's doing it on the sly like he's not out in the open with his fucking like I don't know I just I don't like this emotional David I hate it I don't like that they killed off Elizabeth Shaw no God no God. stupid is horrible that, that mm, awful okay. that is by far my biggest con- point of contention with this movie. It's so fucking dumb to do that. Oh, absolutely. Like, like that was I understand the most... she didn't want to come back. But then why have that ending set up that we got in Prometheus if he like if it was on the even on the table that she might not return for a sequel? Like, why even set that ending up? And that ending was perfect because we like, oh, we're getting a new Ripley, like someone who's a strong female lead that's intelligent, that's not just like these other females in this movie that are just like the oh, stereotype I hate of a the main female character. character. I hate the main character huh? so much. Yeah, Catherine Waters. Yeah, she's exactly. I fucking hate she's, her. I Catherine like, Waters is, is like I like. She's not a bad actress. I hate her character, Daniels. So I mean, fucking I like, awful. I, I like the 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 uh, the setup of the movie. Like I do like how it's like, you know, with Billy Crudup's character, you've got this nervous, inexperienced, and overly cautious crew member that's being forced to take over as captain and then you've got 
the the wife of the ca- of the previous captain that's dead and she's having to deal with some grief with that but like she just gets boiled down to like just both of them do just get boiled down to the least to whiny little bitches. interesting part yeah the least interesting version of those characters and this movie has some like prometheus is far from perfect it has oh, mistakes yeah. people making yeah. dumbass decisions yes this movie has more people making worse dumbass decisions. I feel like Ridley Scott heard the complaints about uh, the the dumb decisions that people made in the last movie. It's like, well, if that's if you think that that's where I go, I can go further. <laughs> like, uh, like, if you thought they were dumb, just wait. Yeah. I mean, let's just get into the basic flaw of the premise of the movie for me, which is all right, the plan is, hey. This mission is all about repopulating the human race on another planet, right? We've got these colonists going with these uh, these embryos and these other sleeping people that are going to repopulate on this planet that's essentially Earth-like. But the crew is composed of nothing but couples. Like, the crew on the ship have to be people that are willing to make tough moral choices in order to preserve the, the, the human race, the species. Some people may have to sacrifice themselves. Right. So... Why would you put it with nothing but couples? That's just automatically problematic. Yeah, like have some single people in there. You're going to have people do irrational shit whenever their fucking loved one is being murdered. Or in this instance, even the opening, the opening issue, the, the inciting incident with the, the neutrino blast. Like, uh, And then that's stupid how that happens. Because wouldn't it be more energy efficient instead of having this giant fucking net, which is like... A big, like, hey, this is an obstacle <laughs> for anything to hit, an asteroid, anything. Wouldn't it make more sense just to put, like, solar panels on the exterior of this like, giant why fucking the, ship? Like, none of the other ships in any previous fucking movie in this franchise needed that. Why the fuck did these no, do? This- no. And Prometheus apparently went further than this than this uh, ship did. I fucking think- probably, dude. I don't know. This yeah. m- And just like the, oh, hey, we got a message playing John Denver. We should nix yeah. our plans and spontaneously go do this. Like, no, fuck that. Send a message back to Earth. Be like, hey, we heard some shit. We're going to keep doing our thing, but like, y'all should check this out. Don't Speaking take which, the 2,000 fucking colonists there. Speaking of which, what in the hell is up with Country Road being in every goddamn Dude, movie now? this movie and, and fucking Kingsman, Kingsman and wasn't it in something else? There's, there's another movie. I can't think off the top of my head, but it's been in a fucking lot of movies lately. Like, I don't get it. I mean, don't get me wrong, great song, but, like, yeah. it's all over the fucking place. It's weird that it's just in every movie now. Uh, I do want to talk about things I do like before we, you know, I just keep bashing on this movie. But, like, I love the score. I think the, like, the whistling flute sound or whatever that yeah. plays in the opening is great. Um, I don't think I'll ever get tired of the slowly appearing titles for this franchise. Oh, I think it no, no, no. still love holds those. up. Love those. Still good. Um, But... Like, that's pretty much all the good stuff in this movie is the score and the title. <laughs> and, like, okay. for example... I couldn't... Go, no, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. All right. I barely understood the black goo in Prometheus. Yeah. Now, I s- absolutely do not fucking get it. From what I understand, it's a, a weaponized bacteria that... The engineers does were whatever the fucking plot calls for. That too, but I was gonna say that the engineers were gonna take back to Earth to wipe out everyone out. Um, but it also, combined with the right DNA, can invoke evolutionary anomalies such as the xenomorph. So in like, Prometheus, it creates life. In this one, it destroys life and also creates monsters. Well, I think it only creates life in. Prometheus because uh, help me remember this the movie because I've seen it a thousand times but in terms of the black goo I'm still a little fuzzy so the xenomorph that appears at the end of that movie is because an engineer's DNA mixed with that uh, thing that was in Shaw's stomach essentially like a a baby let me break it down squid thing let me break it down for you so her man gets infected by the black goo thanks Mm -hmm. to David Yes. He rails her, gets her pregnant almost immediately. Yes. She grows a squid in her stomach. Yes. Cuts said squid out of stomach. Said squid gets big as fuck. Yes. And attacks the engineer. 
Yes. And then we get this weird alien-esque thing out of the engineer. And then it's not important because it doesn't come into play in this fucking movie at all. I I like that that's the origin of the xenomorph, though. Is I it, like though? That it's, Cause this, I like that it's... I think it's interesting. Because, like, no one knows the fucking origin because, like... This movie pretty heavily dictates that David engineered them, but then they also kind of hint that the engineers tried to at some point because they're like they talk about it a little bit in this movie, and then in Prometheus there's murals of the fucking things in that fucking yeah. ship, and yeah. like this oh, I don't know it makes no fucking sense. I will say though that the impact of the revelation that David is the one who essentially created the face huggers feels really flat like i think it because it it really makes the xenomorph less interesting at least in my mind because it's not a natural natural biological like evolutionary creature that's the perfect killing machine that we're led to believe it's just a bored and like emotional android science experiment yeah it it retroactively makes the franchise somewhat boring in like in the lore because in contrast, to what we're talking about, the way the proto-xenomorph was created in Prometheus not only made sense to me, like, like the way it occurs, but it also felt natural because it was, like, an, an, an anomaly in, like, the evolutionary gap. Like, it, it was a great reveal, and it was a super cool way to, like, bridge the two universes of Prometheus and Alien. But the facehuggers are what we come to know in, like, when we get to Alien. Yeah. That that's, that's how the xenomorphs, like... They, you know, latch onto a to a human. It then grows it inside them, burst out of them, and then that becomes a xenomorph. But like, I don't know, man. It All just holds up. It does seem like the black goo is just like whatever it needs to be. It's just a plot device. Um, like, and I ah, uh, how about man. this? Why does why does James Franco need to be in this movie? Because why the fuck not? But also, how and why would fire ever even be able to get into that pod? Like, what would be the purpose of that? Well, I think what, it, would, what I'm guessing is like, I don't know, the fucking oxygen chemical. I just, don't, okay. Whatever. I'll buy the fucking death of Franco. I don't give a shit. Sad to see him go. Because I want to see so, fucking, I want to uh, see Franco lead that mission. Franco ain't putting <laughs> up with that shit. Um... This movie would have gone you, very differently if Franco had been around. Did you watch the prologue for this movie, The Last Supper? Yeah. Because I didn't, but I read about it and read that there's so much foreshadowing about how people die and who's going to die. And apparently, James Franco makes a comment that he's going to bed because he feels like he's burning up. Yep. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Because he yeah. dies in a fiery death. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't feel like his him being put in the cast was such a like promotional stunt. It was so pointless and ultimately made me angry that he was killed off so early. Well, apparently he had a slightly bigger role originally, mm-hmm. and now it's just a cameo. Yeah. Um. Fuck this movie, dude. Jesus Christ. You know what the issue too is we were promised two, maybe three sequels to Prometheus that would ultimately link the film to the first Alien, and instead we got whatever this is. And this might be the last thing we get because of this Disney Fox merger, uh, because apparently everything is just like on hold, and we might be done for Alien for a while. Good. So we got was <laughs> basically good. this, which is the equivalent to me of a fan film. This is like fan fiction to me. Like it's just, I don't know, man. Like I said, it just retroactively makes the franchise just not nearly as interesting when you know this is how it all starts. It just sucks. Well, man. it's like. We still haven't even made it to the fucking original planet from Alien. Nope. And apparently there's, like, if Scott would have his way, there'd be, like, three or four more movies in between there. We don't need that many fucking movies. Why do we need that many fucking movies? You know what they said, too, is that, um, you know, he originally was going to go further into the Prometheus lore, but because he got some backlash... Like, he didn't live up to the expectations he thought it was. He was like, oh, people would just want to see just straight Xenomorphs. Okay, I'll give him that in this movie. And then it just ended up being just, he tried to have best, the both worlds, and it just didn't work, man. Dude, like, I was all in for, like, the Prometheus, when it was called fucking Paradise Lost and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was all fucking in for that. And then we got this piece of fucking shit instead. 
It did make me uh, curious, though, uh, watching this movie. What do you think? Because I don't think we really ever go there in this franchise. What do you think Earth looks like in this universe? Like, is it just like a Blade Runner type world with Waylon Yutani running everything? Because they seem to have infinite money. That's pretty much what I pictured. Because they, you know, they mention Earth. They're trying to look for a planet that to re- recolonize and repopulate. So I'm assuming that Earth is just desolate at this point. Um, yeah, I, 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 I imagine I, it's like Blade Runner esque. I would like to see Earth at least for a moment in one of these movies, just to, just because I'm curious. But you know, also watch this movie. I got I started thinking. You know, what do you do if you're in Billy Crudup's situation? Stick to the fucking plan. You think so? Like, but this planet. For all I like, I get where he's coming from. This planet does seem like a wet dream, but it's also like, how did how did no one find this planet? How did they miss it? I mean, that just seems super convenient too, because like, if they what, found is it this the other, fucking island from Lost, like is it jumping <laughs> it around? Moves. It just it's so Lost convenient. Spoilers, though. guys. Like it doesn't make sense. Like if they've plotted out. The, the fucking cosmos all the way to this planet that they're going to that's going to take seven more years to get to how do you miss this one that is even better conditions than that you ever hoped for like how did that just seems so convenient and it's just it's so uh, it's so blame it on the maybe the black goo fucking hit it away from there <laughs> i don't fucking know um it also seems maybe this is just me but 15 crew members in charge of 2,000 bodies and 1,100 embryos seems light. Does it not? Dude, all these... That's the thing with all these movies. They always have tiny fucking crews. Yeah. Like... Also... Maybe they just explain it away as like, oh, futuristic science. Uh, How the fuck? That ship is I mean, huge. they murdered... They murdered some in the opening scene, but it's like, eh. It still didn't seem like that many. Also, of all the crew members in this ship, Franco was the captain. Are you serious? <laughs> like, okay. I mean, that maybe maybe Waylon Yutani just needs to reevaluate their application process. Fucking and maybe. Because like, yeah. Um. So the planet that that we get to, I'm, I know everyone's already said this a thousand times, but I'm going to say it as well. Why would you not wear a goddamn helmet on this planet? Same thing like, with Prometheus. But in Prometheus, they at least try to explain it away. They're like, you know, they get there, they're wearing their helmets, and then they're like, hey, the oxygen levels are better than on Earth, and then they, like, test it. They're like, oh, it seems good. And this one, they just straight up walk out with fucking baseball caps on. Like, Like, there are some lines about, like, oh, the atmosphere is this, blah, blah. So, I don't know. They just kind of, like, do away with it. Also, there's I don't give a this fuck planet. if it says that the atmosphere is non-toxic. They are fucking scientists. They would not risk that. They would they're run tests. They would so, experiment. God damn they, it. They're billions of miles away from Earth. Like, I wouldn't trust anything. I mean, there's wheat on this planet, and everyone's just like, eh, whatever. I'd be like, fucking what? Yeah. Like, are you out of your mind? Everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's weird. I'm like... Yeah, it's fucking weird. And the fact that they find no animals on this planet that's covered in vegetation and water. Like, they even make a comment. They're like, no, there's no birds or anything. Yeah, that's kind of suspicious, don't you think? That there would be no no type of, like, animal life on this planet. Like, you have the basic necessities for evolutionary growth. Like, and yeah, water not a and... a goddamn thing there. Nothing, yeah. Another thing I will say, though, that I do like about this movie is that even today, Ridley Scott knows how to make a movie look amazing. Because these landscape shots oh, yeah. are always fucking Shout gorgeous, out man. the aerial crew on his movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, seeing the wide landscape and then the tiny ship flying in from the clouds always looks amazing. I will say, I do kind of fuck. I hate the setup and everything, but I do kind of fuck with the albino morph. Albino morph. That's what the fuck I'm going to call it. The Which asshole one face, that? the asshole face one. Really? Because I fucking hate it. No, no, I don't <laughs> like it. I like the scene where it attacks them at night. Oh, you're talking. You're, I thought you were talking about the, the ones that's the, the bipedal one, the one that stands up at the end. Uh, you're talking about like the little ones that like walk walk on all fours. Well, those become the tall, skinny, yeah. white ones. So you like the tiny? What I call it, just the tiny xenomorphs. I don't like, like the them. I just like that scene. It looks cool. It's a cool looking scene, but I gotta tell you, man, it makes me think of Jurassic Part Two. 
in the tall grass. I'm not mad about that. I fucking love that scene. <laughs> it is the best scene in that movie. Like, and I um, mean, it just, it like, and I mean, David has a badass entrance. Yeah, he does. That That is one of the best shots in the movie, too, is that him with backlit, holding up the flare gun. Yeah. But also, so the xenomorphs that are these ultimate killing machines are afraid of a flare gun? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, You know what, too? Another problem I have with this movie is they didn't even, they didn't even bother with the crew members that weren't Billy Crudup, Catherine Watterson, or Danny McBride. Like, I couldn't tell you any of their names. Couldn't even fucking try, bro. No. Couldn't even make an educated guess on any of them. Um, it just and like the original Alien, you you get to meet every character. Like that's why they have that last supper scene in the movie, so you can get to know everyone. And this one, they just put it as a prologue. They're like, eh, no one cares about that. Like, no, I kind of want to be invested in the characters. Yeah, like I want to know who these. I like this franchise. Are. Ugh. Also, another problem I have: How did this crew not know anything about the Prometheus expedition? Like, whenever they find the ship there. They they're not they're like oh it's Elizabeth Shaw and then Walter mentions it to him and they're, he's like oh she was part of the Prometheus expedition their ship went missing like if I worked for Whaling Utani and there was a ship that went like what ten years before well, to another okay planet, do they do they work for Wayland is that ever implied I mean I'm assuming so unless there's just some other billionaire fucking company that can afford to send spaceships filled with thousands of people good point like. Um, well, I mean, well I know they have Daniel, to because Walter's the, there. Daniels he's is a, a Daniels is aware of the Prometheus, but they don't like if they found the ship that was crashed there again. Like, why would they not be like, that "Yo, in? Earth, we found him!" Like, what yeah, the fuck? Yeah. Like, do they just not talk to Earth? I mean, not even an attempt to send out a message. But yeah, they have to be part of Wayland Yutani because Walter's there, and he's a he's a part of the Wayland Yutani crew. Like, he he was a creation of them, unless they're just like manufactured to the point where anyone can use them for like their expeditions well they do uh the walter david scene later they do talk about that how the david models freaked people out so they made the walter model less human i'm like 90 percent sure it's wayland yutani crew i'm pr- it's gotta it, be. no i'm sure you like why would they fucking not make it wayland yeah but again the whole reason this movie gets set into motion is if everyone would have just wore their fucking helmets also, what kind of scientist just steps on a foreign planet's plant life like like he does and just doesn't take any caution or notice to it? Well, I don't think he's a scientist. But still, I mean, they, they all have to be some form of a scientist to be on this expedition. Because, I mean, it's it's insane, like, the level of... Stupidity. Not, stupidity and just not taking any precaution whatsoever. Like there's, And then the second guy that gets affected, he just puts his face right into a plant spore yeah. and just inhales its aroma. Like, dude, come on. <laughs> They're all so fucking was direct, stupid. All I wanted was a direct sequel to Prometheus. That's, that's all I wanted. That's, it was too much to ask, apparently. I just wanted a nice wrap-up to Sean and David's storyline that connected the two, the two films with Alien. Like, I don't need this fanfic side plot. How... Hmm. How do you kill off your... That's like if... How the that's fuck like when, did Shaw rebuild, David? That's a good point. <laughs> that's a very good point. I don't know if she had the materials on that aliens. Also, the fact that she can just fly that spacecraft like it's nothing is insane. Yeah. A lot of holes um, there. Yeah, man. This movie, this movie is just stupid people making stupid decisions and then getting surprised when stupid shit happens. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm on. I'm on an alien spaceship. Let me just start touching buttons, inhaling the fumes from plants and everything. It's this is just late. Like I think he's just gotten lazy in his in his older days, man. Like he's like, I know what people want. They want to see Xenomorphs kill people, but we want to see it done well, though. We want a good story. Like Alien, good story. Aliens, good story. Prometheus, good story. Like you have to have the foundation set up first before I care about these people. Oh, and can we talk about the Walter David switcheroo at the end? Yeah, it, it's so, that it, shit it's was coming so, a mile away. Yeah, the moment they cut away from the fight, and it's like, and then he, like, five minutes later, Walter walks out. I was like, well, that's fucking David. Like, yeah, duh. It, it just seems. Speaking of that, the, the whole switch of David being this evil fucking whatever, like, it just seems so stupid when you watch this movie right after Prometheus. Like, yeah, David's kind of like. Low key, like fucking up the plan, but he's also following orders based on Guy Pierce. Yeah, like the fact that like 
how does he become this? Like whenever he screams no after after Billy Crudup shoots the 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 proto xenomorph thing, like it's like no, I don't want an emotional David. Like that's not. I want the Ozymandia scene, David, one who's like manipulative, but like still puts on a, a somewhat calming voice and friendly face. I don't. I don't want a fucking karate fight scene between two androids in my alien movie. <laughs> and then why 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 are they kissing? Why is him and why are him and Walter kissing? What is the purpose of the scene? He man, David kisses a few people like within 5 minutes. Like he kisses so Walter and Daniels like almost back to back and it's just like why did why does he I don't get his motivation. I don't get his motivation. Yeah, he thinks... Like, is he basically just how? Like, he thinks humans are a dying species, so there's no point in relating them. You know, might as well kill them off. It just seems so stupid, man. I don't know. I don't like you this movie. You think this movie seems stupid? I gotta say, though, everyone slipping on blood in this movie is hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. Stresses another, me out. Another thing... Like, doing it once is fine, but he does it at least twice in this movie. <laughs> um... Well, no, dude, the, that, like, med bay scene, I think fucking th- both women that are in there slip on blood and fall down. They do. Everyone's they do. just fucking falling all over themselves. You should put yakety sacks under this fucking score. It'd be hilarious. Um, oh, that would be amazing. But I do got to say, one one good thing and one bad thing about that scene, one good thing is whoever that guy is, because I couldn't tell you his fucking name, the guy giving the performance of... The one that the xenomorph burst out of gives a great fucking performance, man. Oh yeah, like, like the first guy is. that gets attacked. Yeah, the guy that's in the med pain is like spazzing out. That yeah. is a, it's a great fucking performance from that. And guy. like you know, I like the little change of it bursting out of his back. That's interesting. That's cool. Yeah, like well, the, apparently that took uh, liberties from the novelization. I think of Alien Three, where like there was the idea that. Uh, the xenomorphs would literally burst out of the skin of whoever they, the parasite, parasitic host, like the, rather than being the chest burst or in the tiny one coming out, it would fully grow and, and then just burst out of their skin. So that's kind of why they do it out of the back in this one, which I kind of like. It's fucking terrifying, man. Yeah. And but, like, the, like the other one comes out of that dude's uh, mouth. Yeah, that was pretty like, cool. That's fucking wild. But. The bad part of that scene is how, again, how stupid everyone is. And it's like, hey, we have this sick, these two sick individuals. No need to wear masks or gloves or, like, sanitize ourselves. We're just walking around, letting people, like, he they do pukes on that girl. And, like, she's like, no, nah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, whatevs. You know, Mally, typically I have something clever to say right here to lead us into a segue for uh, the contest code. But I just want to get it out of the way so we can get back to talking about how horrible this movie is. Oh, fuck um so yeah if you're listening this far into the episode congratulations you've won a chance to win some free stuff all you have to do is go right now to reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist at the very top there you'll find a pin for the official discussion thread of alien covenant and in that uh that text post you can leave a comment with this code that I'm about to give you right now for a chance to win some free stuff. It's as simple as that. We'll randomly select a winner. We'll get in touch with you and send you out a swag bag with some free stuff from us. Uh, and that contest the code is... swag bag? I use the, t- the term swag bag because that's what it is. It's a bag right. of swag. Uh, and that contest code that you're going to leave in relation to the movie is... Serve in heaven or reign in hell. I'm really glad you didn't use the phrase... I'll, I'll do, do the, the fingering. fingering. I thought about it and I was like, mm, let's not, let's not do that. Um, but yeah, go right now, reddit.com slash R slash silver linings playlist. Leave that contest code as a comment on the official discussion thread for alien covenant. Win some free stuff from us. Back to the bullshit. But I gotta tell you, dude, I, I know you like them. I'm not here for the tiny xenomorphs. Like, no, I didn't say I like them. I just thought that scene was cool. That Fuck that that's th- that scene in the med bay is cool, and the scene in the in the fields in the tall grass is pretty cool. But like, that's what I'm saying. I don't like the fucking tiny xenomorphs are fucking stupid. Yeah, when the little one burst out of Billy Crudup later on, 
Oh my god. There's that uplifting score. (laughs) And like he Michael Fassbender raises his hands and so does the little alien. Terrible. Why the fuck are they fully grown aliens when they fucking burst out, by the way? Yeah. What happened to the little fucking slug thing? I was gonna say the evolutionary cycle in this movie is all fucked up. Like if a xenomorph can become damn near fully grown in a matter of minutes, like the one that uh expels from that dude's mouth and then starts attacking them in the field, it's almost fully grown. What is the life expectancy of these things? Like, shouldn't it be dead in, like, a few hours? <laughs> you would fucking think. Um, also, I think the Xenomorphs look terrible in this movie. I think. Oh, they look fucking stupid. The CG is terrible. Like, especially that tall one that's bipedal that bites the girl in the neck and bites her head off. Like, it looks so bad, man. The CG is awful. I agree. Um, it's not good. More more bad things in this movie. Uh, Go fucking figure. Really, Scott had to have known that I'll do the fingering line was terrible, right? Right. And that like f- that is by far the most just it's terrible homoerotic scene of all time. That what is the purpose of that flute scene, man? I don't get it. I don't like it. I mean, is it just to show that like they're evolving as? Or, like, the differences between David and Walter? Like, I guess. Like, like I have nothing against, like, a little, like, a homoerotic scene or whatever. Yeah. But that scene is just not written well. It's not. It's really bad. But then they have, like, the Ozymandias scene, which is fucking awesome. Like... The Ozymandias scene is fucking dope! I, I like that they put the little... The scene in there of David murdering everyone. And then, like, him reciting Ozymandias and Walter like pointing out that he gets it wrong about who wrote the poem which I yeah gotta, i gotta ask is that fantastic is that scene there just to show that like dave is not as infallible as he thinks he is i mean he, he mentions the wrong author yeah, yeah that's what i figured it's not it very has deep to be what it's for yeah it's not very deep um, it's really not but uh i i yeah that speaking of that bipedal xenomorph i think it's the worst fucking thing in this movie i'd rather have the tiny xenomorphs all day every day and yeah then there's just there's just so many plot conveniences with that scene too like no one hears that girl screaming as she's being attacked or uh billy crudup shooting it later on like nobody hears these things because Catherine watterson never seems to hear anything (sighs) they're too stupid to listen i guess yeah well out of all the stupid ones i think billy crudup's got to be the dumbest one in the group he He really is he finds the hybrid he just follows I know David into he, a creepy basement. He like his line of thinking. I just found this hybrid xenomorph thing that's murdered my, my colleagues. I killed it in front of a clearly distraught and angry AI, who then leads me into a cave and then tells me to put my face into an egg sac and then I do it. <laughs> like it when he died, I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. It's so stupid. It's so dumb. Um. I gotta say though that tiny xenomorph that that emerges from Billy Crudup sure has a great sense of dramatic timing, <laughs> because I know right. He's like, "What do you believe in, David?" And David says, "Creation." And then, boom! It explodes from his chest. <laughs> oh, fucking course it does. But that score is so terrible, right there, man. The uplifting score as it's bursting out of his his chest. So I cannot help but fucking laugh. Yeah. That entire fucking time. Yep. Yep. You know it's what? So bad. You know what? I, I you know what? If because we, we get to the part now where we find out that Shaw is dead, I think it's such an insult to do it not only off screen, but then to just not have her in the movie at all. Like, because I mean, juxtapose this movie right after you watch Prometheus. Like, watch Prometheus and then watch this one right after. It's so like disorienting and like distracting and like because you really grow i think as an audience you grow to like shaw a lot because she starts yeah. off as kind of this she's co- fucking great yeah she starts off kind of like ripley does in the first one she's like uh, not all like emotionally ready to like take on this task and then she like watches her husband get murdered she finds out that she's pregnant when she couldn't have a baby all along goes to the horrific cesarean section scene of that movie and she becomes- also I fucking hate her haircut. Which one? Shaw's or Catherine Watterson's? Watterson's. Well, you know that's a wig from Fantastic Beast, right? Are you fucking shitting me? Yeah, she she wore Ezra Miller's wig from Fantastic Beast. 
So yeah. I'm fucking done with this movie. Yeah, the haircut is terrible. But yeah, I, I loved Sean the last movie, dude. And I was like, great, she's our new Ripley. We're going to get her fucking like in Aliens, like being the leader. And then nope, she's not only killed, she's killed off screen. And she's killed by yeah. David, who is like, who was a g- interesting and great character. But in this one is just boiled down to the least common denominator. And it's just really stupid. And <sighs> yeah, I but hate everything. I do got to say, we do find out the answer of do you Android's dream of electric se- uh, electric sheep? Because Walter oh, says, my. I dream of nothing, <laughs> which I think was a, a nod to it. Because he says, David says, do you dream about, what do you dream about? And he says, I dream of nothing, <laughs> which, thank you. I like that. Doesn't, we got an he ask, that. doesn't he ask if he dreams of me? I think he does. Yeah, I think he might be right. God, that's so weird and creepy. I do got to say that there is a small amount of foreshadowing uh, that I don't know if it was accidental or not that David and Walter have switched. Because... Um, you know, after after Catherine Waterston shoots the alien off the ship as they're escaping the plane, and his hood flies up. Yes, I don't wonder that if that was, was accidental inten- or not. That had to have been intentional. You think so? Yes, because it's as soon as he puts his hand on her shoulder and it flies up. I noticed it this time, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Uh, that absolutely was intentional. There's no fucking way. Do you have a favorite shot in this movie? Because I do have one that I like a lot. Like I do like the. Um, the uh, first one of David, but I got a one I like a little bit more. That uh, that shot, it's near the end. Uh, the shot where it just cuts to black because the fucking movie's over. <laughs> Great, beautiful. Uh, it's in the trailer too, but the shot of Danny McBride just standing there with a gun and Catherine Wanderson running down the hallway and grabbing it. I like that shot. Yeah, a lot. Oh a, yeah, that one is cool. It's a very simple shot, but I, I don't know. It really does it for me. Um, that do, was one of those shots that got me hyped in the trailer, and then in the movie, I'm just like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, it just because you think you're getting another movie from that trailer. That's why I say it's misleading. You think you're getting another alien, like on the ship. It's self-contained. They're dealing with it because that's mostly all you see. You see a few shots of the planet, but that's it, like of them on the planet. So I thought it was going to be mostly like Prometheus. Like they go out, one of them gets infected. They go back on the ship. They continue on their journey, and then they have to deal with an alien on the ship. That's what I thought we were getting, which I would even be fine with that. I would even be fine with that because that's basically mirroring Alien. But, yeah, it's not what we got. Um, ah, fuck this movie. One last thing I want to get into before we get into the ending. Uh, I'm also almost out of cookies. <laughs> so, you know... Oh, that was a real bummer for me. The uh, alphabetical chronological order of the androids in the movie. So, you have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Ash, Bishop... Uh, which one was C? I can't remember what C Charles. Was. Charles? I don't fucking know. I don't know. No, I have no it's idea. One of the, oh, it was from Alien Resurrection. Yeah, I don't remember. And then David. And then this one, it should have been E, you know, but we got Walter. I did find they, it. Huh? It's because D is the fourth letter from the beginning. Yeah, and W, w is, is the f- fourth letter from the end to show their complete opposites. It's fucking stupid. I, I think it's kind of a cool idea. I mean, I hate Walter as a character. David's way more interesting. But then again, David's fucking stupid at this in this movie, so... Yep. All right, let's talk about the ending. So, the ending is... Uh, Bullshit. David and Walter have their oh. fight. Uh, assumably, Walter is the winner. They escape from the planet. There's a xenomorph on the ship. It kills t- the one of the couples in the shower. And then the last surviving members, Tennessee, D- Danny McBride, Catherine Waterston, and uh, Walter expel the xenomorph into space and then they're fine spell the demon and uh they're getting ready to go back into hyper sleep tennessee goes first and then Catherine watterson's about to and as she gets put in the pod walter reveals that he's actually david in disguise and uh he puts her to sleep and then expels from his stomach uh spits up to i'm assuming xenomorph embryos i don't even know where he got those his stomach I know, but did he have them in the stomach the entire time? Like, because we never see embryos, do we, of xenomorphs anywhere? Man, I don't fucking know. Also, how do you have xenomorph embryos when the whole point is that xenomorph needs a human host and spawns from the face huggers? Like, are, are those face hugger embryos? I don't know. Maybe. S- stupid. But So, yeah, everyone on sleep on the, on the ship is asleep, and then David, posing as Walter, leaves a... Uh, recorded message like a log but his plan is stupid here too because he says 
uh, oh, there was a malfunction. A few people died, but we're still on course. Uh, you know, but how is he going to explain the the decrease in the fuel in the ship and the disturbance in the cargo bay where they like push the xenomorph out at the end? Like, how is he going to explain all that? It's just stupid. <laughs> um, I don't think he's too worried about explaining it. I think he's just trying to cover his ass until he can. I don't know. I do. I feel like what's the point of the message then? It makes no fucking sense. It does. This movie makes no fucking sense. It doesn't make any sense. So yeah, the implication there is is that David is going to take the colonists, including Catherine Watterson and Jenny McBride, and use them as hosts for the xenomorphs and repopulate this planet they're going to with thousands of xenomorphs because he's got all the all the people on board and all the embryos. And yeah, that's the end of the movie. Um, my last little thing here. God damn it! Before we get to silver linings is uh this is from imdb so you know take it with a grain of salt but from jesus ridley scott's confirmed that the engineers will return in the next sequel uh he said that it's probably going to be during the events of prometheus the engineers that were away will return to the planet find out what david's did done to him track track him down uh and he's saying doing that will allow the sequel to rectify continuity errors between Alien and Alien Covenant. Uh, especially... What the fuck does that mean? Especially how the original uh, engineer abandoned ship uh, crashed with a shipment of Xenomorph eggs on it if David is the one who indeed created them all. Like the ship from the first Alien, how it had face hugger eggs on it if David's the one who created them. You know what I mean? So basically, Scott wrote both Alien and Alien Covenant and still managed to put plot holes in his own fucking franchise. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, but who knows if that'll well, ever happen. Because so again, we literally know the entire fucking plot of the movie then. like, Yep. Engineer's going to catch up to David. They're going to fight. One's going to get away with a bunch of alien eggs. It's going to crash. Boom. Alien. And there Don't will, need to go see it. There will be a crew of people that will just get murdered off in, you know, a random order. Um... But yeah, that's all you know here nor there because this Disney Fox merger, this the Alien franchise, essentially on hold. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's Alien Covenant. So let's get into uh, Silver Linings. Mally, do you have uh, any any anything you can latch on to? Because it is a pretty abysmal ending. Like if you if you actually enjoy the movie, you still got to feel like holy shit at the end of the movie. Because there are people that like this one. Fucking why? I don't know, man. I mean, we defend Prometheus, so I can o- totally understand people not liking that movie. But I guess. Uh, so, yeah, what do you got? Uh, fucking... I don't know, man. I'm just... Danny McBride didn't die yet, I guess. <laughs> you sound very apathetic about this one. And not, I got not nothing too sure. for this. Fuck it. Is it because you didn't want to put the effort in, or you just you don't think there's much to go on? No, definitely the first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I didn't really have anything either. That just because it was, it is kind of like a pretty closed case in terms of what you could look for for a positive. But I mean, yeah, I mean, the ending definitely fits our show. Like, it is not a happy ending. Like, the bad guy wins. They're asleep. Unable to be woken up with a bunch of fucking xenomorph eggs, like, yeah, doesn't make sense, but it's fucking sad. I only have something in terms of what could happen, not necessarily the facts given. Um, okay, I mean, David's outnumbered on the ship. I mean, there's two thousand bodies there. Like, unless he plans to open up each person individually and infect him. I don't know. It just seems... I I don't get what his ultimate plan is. Like, he's going to go create a planet of Xenomorphs, and then what? Like, I don't know. Um, I just feel like he's easily outnumbered, and based on this script that Ridley Scott's spouting, he's he's going to get his comeuppance. Uh, oh, absolutely. So there is, like, a few shit to behold there, and the fact that... We're eventually going to get to Alien, and so there will be some rectification and, like, some justice 
uh, in this franchise. I fucking hope so. But even if you don't buy that, I will say uh, Nomi Rapace got the fucking good end of the deal here because she didn't have to come yeah, back for this fucking did. movie. Uh, and even if you want to go even further, her character, Shaw, was... Uh, you know, in Prometheus, she was upset because she couldn't create life. In this case, she, I mean, she she did get to create life, even if it was not the the way she thought it was going to go. Uh, wow, that's actually not a bad fucking silver lining right there. Right? Fuck. That's all I really got, man. Uh, I I don't ever want to rewatch this movie. Oh, wait, silver lining. I have two cookies left. <laughs> I don't ever want to rewatch this movie again. Uh, no, I was pissed. I had a waffle for them. This is the second of two times that I will watch this movie. Um, Same. Really, Scott? All I got to say is you better get your shit together. Fuck you. You better get your shit together if you want to do another one of these. Or just do the right thing. Do what everyone wants you to do. Pass it on to Neil Blomkamp. That's... Oh, my God. Fucking please. That's what we all want. Let it happen. Uh, especially while we still got Sigourney Weaver around. Um... Yep, that's Alien Covenant. So, Mally, I know you don't want to watch Pick this movie Pick me up, again. alternatives. Exactly. What's a movie we can watch after this to uh, you know what? get back in a good mood? I was struggling to come up with one. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to go with the Danny McBride film. Yep. Or Franco, because I feel like it's too obvious. I'm going with another Catherine Watterson film. Okay. Because I didn't realize she was in one of my favorite fucking movies ever. Mm-hmm. Sleeping with other people. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Logan Lucky. <laughs> no. Okay. That's but also that. Well, I want Sleeping wanted... with other people. Jason Sudeikis, Allison Brie, Adam Scott. It's good cast. Jason Mazukas. It is fucking amazing. I'm going to go. I'm going to stick with the uh, alien space theme here. But I'm going to oh, go Jesus. a more upbeat uh, type of film. I'm going to go with Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, something that will definitely lift your spirits up no matter what movie you just watched. So, fuck uh, yeah. Oh, man. Dance that, off, bro. That, you and me. That is 2017's Alien Covenant. The one, two, three, four, five, sixth movie in the franchise, if you don't count the AVPs. Jesus fucking Christ. I think I did that math right. Um, oh, yeah. Alien. Aliens. Alien 3. Mm-hmm. Alien Resurrection, mm-hmm. Prometheus, this piece of shit. Yep. Yeah, six. I gotta say, we're on where on the Alien scale do you put this one? I think it's probably. I don't think it's dead last. I think it's fifth, maybe. Because for me, I put Alien One as the best. I know a lot of people like Aliens more. Nah, fuck that. Alien One's the best. I like Alien One. Then I would say Aliens. Alien. Aliens. Prometheus. Prometheus. And then you get into some muddy waters there. Hmm. Maybe three and then Covenant. You I, put in Resurrection last? I I don't remember anything about Resurrection. Uh Winona Ryder's in it. I do remember that, but I remember Ridley is a clone and the aliens can swim. I don't remember enjoying three, three and, 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 and Resurrection at all. So it's kind of a blur for those two films. Um I remember three having some more iconic shots in it, some more iconic moments. So mm-hmm. I gotta put that one, and then Covenant, and then Resurrection. The ending of three is fucking rad. I don't remember it. Uh, I've only seen it once. Ripley has a alien queen inside of her, so she oh, commits okay. suicide by jumping into like a lava pit, and the fucking queen bursts out of her chest as she's falling. We should have done Alien like, Three for this. I was about to say, doesn't the doesn't the queen then survive? What? Doesn't it burst from her and then she goes into the lava and it still survives? Uh, I don't remember how that one ends, honestly. Th- I thought that pretty was it. Pretty sure it just ends right there. I don't remember the alien queen surviving. Okay, who cares? Um, so, that's so next Covenant. week, Alien 3. Um, yeah. Uh, well, do you want to give a clue for next week or do you want me to do our, our plug first? Let me give a clue. Okay. Um, you know... Usually my clues are not nearly as vague as yours. Mm-hmm. I usually just throw a quote out. I'm gonna. I'm my my clue this week is pretty vague. All I'm okay. gonna say is that next week's film is definitely not a Voltron movie. You know, I'm so. 
<laughs> that is insane. We have not discussed this before, but I was seriously thinking, I hope he said something about a live action Voltron <laughs> movie. That is hilarious. And only a handful of people are going to get oh, that. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to explain that next week. But thank you for listening, everyone. Please, 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 if you haven't already, subscribe wherever you are listening right now. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or YouTube. Please leave us some feedback or some comments. Give us a rating if you won't mind. Uh, you can also go to facebook.com slash the Silver Lungs playlist and like us there uh, for clues on upcoming episodes. Even more clues than we give in the uh, previous episode. Same thing on Twitter and Instagram. We put up clues for upcoming episodes all the time. You can just find us, just search for the Silver Linings Playlist, or go to reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist, and uh, you can leave us a fee- uh, some feedback there or a suggestion, talk about movies with us. You can leave that contest code we gave you to uh, win some free stuff from us, uh, whole sorts of things. So before we wrap up here, I do want to say, uh, if you haven't already, please also uh, give us a vote uh, for what movie you'd like us to perform in our finale either Star Wars The Last Jedi Fuck or The Shining, uh, you can go right now to facebook.com slash the Silver Linings Playlist, and it's the pinned post at the very top, a link to the poll. Uh, right now, Mally, The Shining is uh, in the lead. God. So, But we got Damn plenty it. of time. I, th- I think like six weeks. We got plenty of time to vote on it, so let your voice be I'm heard. I'm just going to go vote episode. a million times. <laughs> just create a bunch of different email addresses. Um, yeah, just... Uh, Leave a leave a vote for which one you'd like us to cover. Um, we got. I think the finale is on September twenty fourth. If I got that right, you know we're not. So you still got plenty dates. of time. No, uh, but that's all I got, Mally. So is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? No, fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. Don't watch it if you haven't already. Uh, well, I mean, watch yeah. it, listen to this episode, then never watch it again. I mean, you don't have to watch it to listen to the episode. I think we covered it. That's pretty true. Well. <laughs> um. Anything else, Mal, you want to talk about before we go? Nah, man. All right. So until next time, as always, Excelsior. Excelsior. Fuck this movie.